Hello guys, how are you doing? Henry here, back with another video. And on this video, I'm going to be interviewing uh, Musa Duma. You know, he's quite, uh, you know, an, an awesome guy, an entrepreneur, man. I mean, if we're talking about entrepreneurs and creatives, man, uh, Musa is just on top of my list, you know, at least with the guys I know so far. So you guys that know that on my channel, my passion is to inspire you to reach your personal and career goals. <laughs> So if you're back again, you know, thank you for your support. And if this is your first time, a very warm welcome to you. Hit that subscribe button and let's go together because I've got a lot more to share with you guys. So yeah, man, Musa, man, thank you very much to, you know, for, for joining me today, man. No, thank you for inviting me. It's a real honor to be here. You know, I, I didn't consider myself to be <laughs> amongst those, but uh, thank you. It's a real honor. Awesome, man. Awesome, man. Yeah. So I know, like, Musa, you... You, you uh, actually have, um, you, you design shoes, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, and you create shoes. Yes, simply put, I, I make shoes. And you make shoes, man. Yes. And I'm trying to complicate this thing. Uh, you make uh, shoes. No, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> it, it all starts from design. Without the design work, you cannot make something because you have to see it first before you make it manifest. Uh, yeah. Awesome, man. Man, that's, that's so awesome, man. So, so, yeah, so tell us, man your journey because i mean we've got a lot of young young guys watching here you know entrepreneurs aspiring as entrepreneurs you know watching with us you know always watching this channel and you know they want to know the lessons in terms of you know and they want to know like the history so yeah what's the name of your business by the way okay, okay the business name is musalio africa mm -hmm. uh musalio okay there's a long story behind the name uh so musalio is the name i came up with back in 1990s Seven. Oh, wow. uh, I wanted to do something along the lines of cooking, like writing my own cookbook. And so I took Musa, Musalio. So I took the name Musa, Musa to make it sound more Italian because <laughs> Italians are known to, <laughs> for their cooking flair. Uh, so Musal Musalio, originally I'd looked I'd come up with Mussolini, Mussolini uh -huh. but then I looked up. <laughs> and then, <laughs> Who Mussolini is? <laughs> yeah, so you know if you've done history. So I saw the name and I'm like, okay, now I need to change that. So that's how Musalio came about. But then the shoemaking thing was far, was far away from the radar. Uh, uh. So fast track uh, to around when? 2012, I knew that, okay, I need to use this name. Uh, Musalio. Uh, so whatever I was going to start, there was there had to be something with the name Musa Musalio. Oh, uh, wow. and so I, the journey, I'll, I'll just compress it because it's many things. Uh, it's, couple, it's a few things that yeah, I've done but, already. Yeah, but before you go in there, I mean, what, what's your Instagram name? By the way? If, if people want to catch you on Instagram. Musalio Africa. Musalio search, Africa. Search Musalio Africa, you'll see a nice colorful African map. Otherwise, the name you, uh, you can search is african.design underscore real. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, that's the awesome thing about you, you know, at the end of the day, man. You, I mean, this is another thing you're adding, you know, cooking, bro. <laughs> man, I think, I mean, dude, like, I mean, man. So you, what did you study, like, in school? Tell us. Uh, like, school, in tertiary. Okay, I studied accountancy. So I did a BCom in accountancy. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. So you did a BCom in accountancy. Yes, sir. But you're making shoes. Yes. Uh, I think the problem with, uh, I'll, I'll use the normal phrase that I hear from the people I listen to. Uh, our education system doesn't teach us much how to think. Uh -huh. it, it sort of confines the human being into a box where a person has to think that what you study is a dead sentence or you are sentenced to now follow that path mm. for your entire life. But for me, I've always looked within and I said, I love so many things, you know, anything I see, you know, whether it it's, has to do with creativity, it, it intrigues me. Yeah. Or, or whether just understanding how people think, I'm intrigued by that. Mm. But then obviously one cannot go and study psychology because you want to understand how people think or and you can't go and and do a law degree just because you, un 
you want you to, want to learn contracts exactly right? so so I always said I'm just learning uh, I'm going to university because people want to want to say okay you've studied this so for me it was about that and understanding people because I'll share something uh, which disturbed me, you know, which I really hated when I was at university. Yeah. Uh, uh, my peers at uni, uh, you're in the lecture theatre, some, and you'd see people. They, there was no quest for knowledge. Okay, I, I shouldn't say in it in general terms, but mm. in a few people, most students you see them, they're rushing maybe to just to pass the exam or get an A. Yeah, but we, then you study for the exam. Exactly. <laughs> you see. So, so for me, that always worried me. Yes, it's good. You have to study for the exam and, yeah. and get good grades. But then what about beyond that? Because mm. some people, are, you know, their attitude would be, as long as I've passed, then at least it's done. But yeah. then can you imagine a doctor who's just interested in, 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 in that moment, who's mm. not in, who doesn't have a desire to... Do, to excel all the mm. time. Yeah. And I think the thing is, like, real life problems don't come like that, right? Yeah. They don't come as a set, like, question, you know. Mm. Real life problems, like, evolve. They require you to be exactly. dynamic. Exactly. You know, if you're going to actually solve a real life problem. Because, I mean, you, you can't come and say, okay, this problem needs to be, you know, what is A plus B? Exactly. <laughs> you know, it comes exactly. in, in a certain way, you know, yeah. which you can't even, you know, sometimes cannot predict. And you need to solve it in the moment. Yeah. No, absolutely. So that's that's my philosophy in life. So you need to be dynamic and you need to, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. Uh, mm. So everything, it, it goes back to to the moral camp compass that, that, you know, I've been taught. And, and so it's like, do I just, do I, do I just want to, to be this uh, static person or do I have to be dynamic? So I chose to be dynamic. That is why I said my my degree, the, the, the certificate that I have won't do anything for me unless, because mm. life, when life hits, life hits, and you need to have solutions. Yeah. So I'm on a quest to find solutions. And by the way, the, the way the company started was because I was like, I was into fashion, like this stuff that I'm wearing. I, I was designing this thing. Man, this this is nice, bro. I mean, like, dude, I can see you're creative, man. Thank just, you. Just <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I, I started, you know, s small, you know, with the things that I could manage. But then I realized that I was, I was a, s a small fish in a big pond. You know, yeah. there are people ahead. Uh, so I had to think big because I know that uh, big things have been planted inside of me. So I, I thought, how can I, what is it that I can do that can make me really stand out? Because in as much as you can make this, you come up with the designs, people are like, wow, but then still they have somewhere else that yeah. they can compare you to and say, but that one's better than you. And uh, I'm by no way a fashion designer. I mean, there are brilliant fashion designers who went to fashion school, so there was no way I could compete with them. But then I realized that as I was going out to people, you know, they liked the, the sandals that we were making. By the way, it started when I was in Kenya uh, with, with the sandals, so there was that inspiration from there, and we were selling here in South Africa. So it didn't start with shoes, and but then I learned shoe making there in the streets in Nairobi. Dude, you learned shoe making in the streets. Uh, well, in the marketplaces, <laughs> yes. I didn't man, go to school. It? Yes, man, that's that's amazing. But I mean, but you know, let's just back up, man. Yes. I mean, because I mean, your story is just intriguing. Mm -hmm. You know, at least uh, to me, yeah. you know, just the way you have transitioned you know, with regards to different careers. Um, mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's just so fascinating. So, mm. so, okay, so you studied accounting. Yes, in, okay. in, in, um, in, in tertiary yes. or university. Uh, you said University of Kwazulu Natal. Yes, University of Kwazulu Natal. Okay, and, and, uh, and, and when, when, when did you finish? Okay, uh, so I finished in 2007. And then from there, I was looking for, for work. But then I was, I was just busy with with some projects or helping some organizations at the university mm. so i was really busy you know i was i was doing lots of learning in the process so it didn't feel like a wait i don't i mean i was doing the normal application stuff and then at some point i think i was intrigued by the telecoms industry so i started applying there so i'd buy the papers the sunday times search then and uh, there was a new company, uh, fairly new, uh, Neotel. Yeah. And then they had like 
business process analyst uh, vacancies. Mm. So I, I looked there and then I, I put in an application and then uh, they called me for an interview. And yeah, I think they, s they were looking for people who had an entrepreneurial spirit. Mm. So that really got me the role because I didn't have any work, you know, work experiences per yeah. se. You know, yeah. it was just working in the local university newspaper and what else? Just working in those organizations. So it's, it's very important to build a, a record. Mm. Whatever you are doing, however insignificant it is, by the way, uh, I was tutoring uh, like s first year first year students as well oh, in wow. accountancy. Mm. So I put that, you know, I put in a very uh, convincing CV, you know, to show like three years work experience. I'd also done like vacation work at uh, at uh, one of the big four firms. Mm. Uh, so that helped to boost, you know, the to boost the weight on my CV. So it's very important to to not be idle as a student, because many people think that, okay, uh, university is time to just play around. Man, and party, watch some series, you know, yeah. and study for the exam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I kept myself very busy. Uh, you know, I was doing so much, and uh, to some degree that affected my grades a bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know how it is, man. <laughs> yeah, it affected my grades, but, but if, if you ask me if I'd do what I did again, uh, Definitely, yes, I would, yeah. because it, it prepared me, you know, it set mm. the platform for me to, to be doing what I'm doing mm. now. No, but I like what you say, man, like, no, build a record. You know, I mean, if you're in varsity and watching this or in school or whatever it is, you know, build a record. I mean, even it applies to careers. If you're still working, you know, do something significant. Because a lot of people are just, they feel that they're just stuck in whatever they're doing, but they don't want to, you know, to at least build some sort of record to yeah. wherever they want to go. So if, if you are saying that, okay, I, know I want to transition in my career, I don't like this, but when you're still where you are, but what sort of record are you, are you building to where you want to be? No, absolutely. And, and also just taking part in other extracurricular activities because mm. people get so boxed up in, into what they're doing that they, you know, it's like, I have to get the certificate or I have to finish this. It's very good, you have to, but then, like we started earlier on, we said, you, you need to, you're a dynamic human being and you cannot change that. Like, mm. like now so many students are sitting around, they feel so helpless because uh, maybe you've started civil engineering and the construction industry uh, had a recession. Mm. So now people feel that they cannot do anything. But then that's, that's an opportunity. Yeah. I always see challenges as, as opportunities. Mm. So I... I knew that I'd be successful in anything that I did because I'd be helping people, you know. Mm. People knew me at university. I'm not saying that people need to be, you know, like known and all that stuff, but, you know, be dynamic in what, in what you do so that you know that you have options in life. Man. Don't, don't lock yourself down to one thing. Man, that's so true, man. And, and, and I think, you know, what, what you know, just speaking now, um, you say that you, 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 I see you applied yourself in university. Yes. I think when we were speaking to before, you said you didn't want to study accounting. Oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what did you want to study? Well, it's not that I didn't want to study. Well, it wasn't my first preference. Yeah, because, it wasn't your first. Because I don't like things that, that everyone runs to. And uh, in that era where I was, everyone was running to, 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 be a doctor or study accountancy because mm. people said, you know, I can't, if you're a CA, you know, then you earn lots of money. Yeah, you know? you're the guy. The, yeah, you know, so, <laughs> so that was the thing. Uh, so me, I wanted to do sports management because, you know, I really enjoyed my sporting uh, career in high school and, mm. uh, you know, I'd built up this vision that, okay, I, I could even work in cruise ships, you know, just wow. travel the world and, and train athletes, you know, and help and also help uh, some athletes who, who were less privileged as well, you know, just to help, who had talent, because I saw so much talent, you know, uh, maybe people from less privileged areas than where I was, but then those guys had raw talent. Mm. So, you know, I, I really wanted to help and get into the sports administration kind of thing. But then of course, uh, my parents told, uh, 
the eldership. Dude, you had a family meeting. <laughs> so you had a family meeting. <laughs> yes, yes. And so a man that I respected had to come and speak sense to me and wow. say, look, uh, we know you love this, uh, but you can always do it later, but first get something more serious. Wow. Uh, but I understand where they were coming from. It's very important to, to have that because that's what the world looks at, you know, uh, mm. unfortunately. So it, it helped me a lot as well. Man, I, I like that, man. And, and I think also with regards to, to my thinking as well, you know, of course, you know, there are certain things. I think life is long. I think that's one thing for sure. Absolutely. You know, to be honest with you, you know, doing a degree for, you know, for three years or four years, mm. it, when you look at, look at it in the broader scheme of things, mm. it's not that long. You know, you can still then go into what you really wanted to do, you know. Exactly. Though it may not be the best way, mm. you know, I'm not saying it's the best way, but yeah. I think it's still possible. Even if you find yourself that you, study, you didn't study what you really liked, yeah. you can still go back and do something you like. Uh, look at it this way. Uh, I like what you say. I mean, we're in 2021 now. Yeah. Uh, when I was at uni, I don't even think that I had a cell phone. Wow. Oh, okay, I think I had. But then it was a 3410, that light blue 3410. So <laughs> there was snake. You exactly. Snake on that thing. <laughs> exactly. So, so then we didn't really have much options. But now you can be sitting at home. You mm. can be learning Mandarin. You can be learning wow. about engineering. Mm. Right now, I'm sitting and talking to clients, mm. and I'm speaking in French. It, wow. I'm speaking Portuguese. Man. And so for me, it's a priority right now to learn and those languages. And you can languages. also speak Swahili. Uh, kidoko. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a bit. <laughs> yeah. So uh, now you, can, you cannot limit yourself to getting a paper degree. It's, it's all about outcome-based learning. That's mm. what I focus on. Because, mm. I mean, okay, I'm sorry if you're an educator, but I mean, I respect educators. But, but many people chase papers, mm. but then they are socially irrelevant. They just want to show that they have papers. Mm. Anytime, if I'm looking for an employee, I, I will not be looking for your degree. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it, it helps. It tells me that you, you have some capabilities. Mm. You, you're committed to something yes, exactly. for a while. Absolutely. <laughs> But then I need to make sure that I'm making the best investments mm. for my business. So when I'm looking at you, I'm going to s check if you are able to give me what the business needs. Yeah. Or if you have the potential so mm. that we can develop you to give us the results that we need. Yeah. So a degree is just a bonus. So, so no one is at a disadvantage. That's the nice thing, you know, when, when uh, entrepreneurship rises, you Entrepreneurs are in a space where they have to, they have to optimize operations because mm. there are so many people who are qualified, who have degrees, you know, like formal degrees. Yeah. But then also there are so many people who are hardworking, who are hungry for opportunity yeah. and who can be the difference that a business needs. Mm. But then also there are so many who have the qualifications who just think that their paper is going to get them what they need. You know, I can, yeah. uh, I know so many people who are, who are like that. Uh, mm. So uh, that's the nice thing. Entrepreneurs have the power to decide who they take on. So it's up to you to develop yourself. Yeah. If you're working for an organization, uh, say a large corporate, it's, it's very important to, to learn from, from, you know, what's the, the, the opportunities, the people around you, because the best place to learn is where you have lots of people, you know, you, you develop your soft skills around people, how to deal with people. So people in corporates, many people, they like to complain, you know, about uh, not getting a pay rise, that they are being, uh, that they're being underpaid. Mm. We've all been there, okay? At least yeah. most of us have been there. You yep. know what, Pastor, I was listening to your, <laughs> to your story when you were sharing, you know, uh, yeah. I think it's... The it, Grace it, Podcast. Yes, the Grace Podcast. And, yeah. and you know, I was inspired, you know, because you, you were saying that, you know, you were being underpaid, but, but you did, you gave your all in the business. Mm. And, and, you, and you all started there, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, most people started there. Mm. But then now it depends about your vision. It's not about what others do to you. Mm. It's about how you respond to that. Yeah. And, and so for me, it was very important 
to how I responded to how I was treated. Yeah. When, when I had that opportunity to be in the corporate space, uh, by the way, I worked with very nice people because uh, <laughs> people will, say, will think that, uh, you know, <laughs> we're working in a... You don't like the company, or you, yeah. you, like, you didn't like what was, like the people and whatever. But. No, it's, it's very good. It's, a, it, it's great exposure, you know. I even got some uh, nice qualifications that I wouldn't have obtained, you know, and in a very niche space. So it's, mm. it's very good. It's great opportunity. I always encourage people to start there if they can. But if you, if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, then you need to give yourself, help people, us to help other people in different departments. Don't just say, you know, I'm in this department, so I'm not going to do this one's work. Mm. Be the one to help people and, and see how you can optimize the, the operations mm. of the business. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So to cut you there, no. but I mean, you know, be there to make things work. Exactly. You know, and, and I think that's one thing um, uh, with regards to taking things to, to, to the next level. Yeah. And, and it's always, you know, that trap of, you know, I'm being underpaid. I think it's mm -hmm. a big trap. It's a big one. Because I think where, where I was working is that, and, and so that's what I say, that it's, it's I thought I was there. Mm -hmm. I, okay, a lot of people, there was high channel of, oh, this place, people, they don't pay and all mm -hmm. these things. But that's what the, and I realized it later, I was not there for a paycheck. I was there to learn business. Exactly. And then to get my own business. That's the Absolutely. reason why I was actually in that place. Absolutely. And, and for me, it was about, you know, my boss, right? Mm. What are his goals? What is he passionate about? Yeah. How can I make these goals a reality? Yeah. I think that's, that was my, 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 my focus each and every single day, you know? And, and eventually things worked out, you know? No, absolutely. You have to focus on the, on the big vision and make sure that you play your part. Forget about what the uncommitted or the unfaithful employees are doing yeah. because uh, I, I run with the motto be well one of the motors is do unto others as you'd want them to do unto you mm. so also for employees i ask myself how would i want to be rewarded yeah how do i want my customers to reward me mm. I, I want them to to reward me generously yeah. to reward me fairly yeah but then also you can twist that if you're an employee uh, you need to you need to give your best to your boss. Even mm. if they're not uh, giving you what you think they should be giving you, mm. uh, things are going to change at some point. Mm. Or in fact, you are building yourself up and setting yourself up, especially if you want to go into entrepreneurship. Yeah. Because the worst thing you can do to yourself is to be complacent and, and behave like everyone else. Mm. You need to know that, that you, you, this is just a journey that you're in. You're just mm. starting out and you're going somewhere. Because the best school for me was in the corporate space. It was such a blessing. Yeah. At the time, I would tell myself, you know, okay, I see people are behaving like this. Okay, all right. So when I'm employing people, this is the attitude. Now, I'd be thinking ahead, how will I manage people who do this? So now, no employee can, can come with certain tricks before me because mm. I've seen it in the corporate space. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, that's, yeah. that's, that's awesome. So how, how long were you in the corporate space? Uh, let's see, 2009 to 2014. Yeah, wow. so, so it, it wasn't long, but then we did but, but so much. We did so much, you know, because mm. sometimes people count years, but then it's what you do within that, within. Time, within, within that space. I dedicated myself so much, and it was nice because I started before I was married. So uh, even the evenings, I'd know that, okay, if as long as there was no church, by the way, because uh, that's another thing. Uh, I believe that there's a huge uh, Christian community. Uh, yeah. So... So for me, it, it was very important also to balance things. Uh, mm. uh, I, I shouldn't allow my career, you know, to be the all and, and all. It, you know, it, there has to be balance. Be, mm. it, again, it goes to being that dynamic person. Yeah. Before I'm a career person, I'm, mm. a, I'm a believer. That's me, you know, other people, it's the other way around. So yeah. we set our priorities in life and it's really about setting that priority that will determine where you're going to end up. No, that's true, man. That's yeah. true, man. So I think I, I also saw one quote. I think it was along the lines, I think from Billy Eppard. I mean, whether you know him or not, but <laughs> he's a, like a multi-millionaire in the United States, uh, yeah. Christian gentleman as well. Yeah. And he, was say, he said something about, 
with regards to the marketplace. Yes. You know, we, we don't bring time, we bring value <laughs> to the marketplace. So it's not Absolutely. really about, oh, and I've been here for 50 years. No, no, no. Yeah. What, what is the value that you have actually br brought within that 50 years? So yeah, man, so I mean, you're in the space. Um, so you said you were at, in, in New Hotel, what were you, what, what was your role? I uh, was doing uh, business processes. So we're Business processes, yes. right? Then after New Hotel, where did you go? Uh, went to the SAPS, the South African Bureau of Standards. Of oh, Standards, then what were yes. you doing there? Uh, writing standards. Writing so standards. I was responsible for the mm. system standards. Mm. But you also told me that, uh, when I was talking to you the other day, you said to me that you, you, like, you ended up like designing uh, apps. Like oh. mobile apps, man. I mean, dude, like, yeah. how many things can one person do? Uh, <laughs> as much as God gives the wisdom, as much as time permits, as much as you desire, it all starts with the vision. So whilst I was in Neotel, you know, I like technology. I mean, uh, Neotel was a tech-driven company, but mm. then, uh, you know, apps, the app, there was this hype about apps back around. 2011, 2012. So I was, you know, my interest was intrigued, uh, was piqued. So I, I started looking into apps and I'm like, okay, there's an opportunity here. There are many things I could do. Maybe it could be my way of venturing into business whilst I'm working. And that's another thing. Some people think that you, you're just going to stop what you're doing and then you're going to start a business. There's never a perfect time to start. You actually need to start preparing. Uh, so I started preparing, you know, reading up. I'd spent so much time reading up about these app platforms, and mm. and I, I really, I really had so much knowledge uh, by within one year, and and then I started, you know, working on on my website to to prepare this, uh, and I started working on apps. So to prepare f for my business, I registered the business. Mm. I was still in the employer at Neotel. Mm. Uh, but then I was doing this after hours. I started searching on Gumtree then, because uh, that was like the main search uh, search place for yeah. within the local context. And then I saw that people needed apps, but then they there weren't many people as well, you know, who were out there marketing their services, mm. except for the larger agencies. So I, I looked for the gap and I started exploring. And then I advertised. I started advertising the services when I was working mm. at the SABS. Mm. And then peop, uh, one client applied, and then I told them, look, I'm working a full-time job. I'm here at the SABS. So transparency as well, it's very important. So yeah. that clients' expectations uh, you know, are, are not too high. You know? So I told them, I'm working at the SABS, but then I can work on your app after hours. Wow. Yeah, so that's how it started. Because you mm. have to use what you have. That's another thing. People focus so much on, on what they don't have and forget what they have. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that's when I started. And then it was, it was good. Uh, so that really motivated me. So I real, now I was calculating, okay, if I can get this client and they pay me so much, mm. then it means that if I can be able to fulfill on so many clients, then... I can get to a point where I'm getting the same as, as how much I'm making at my employer. And then mm. there now I have to make a decision. Do I want to employ someone to do the work mm. or I'm going full time into, into business? Wow. And so that is how, that is how I went into business. <laughs> so, so, so you did the app business for, for quite a while. Uh, it wasn't too long, but mm. yes, I mean, it, I had some good projects. Uh, I, I, I landed a, a big deal, uh, not within six months, you know, of, of leaving the workplace. Uh, I landed a nice big deal, mm. uh, which was, you know, which gave me the confidence that I was in the right track. But then now that also opened up opportunity for my wife to to pursue her career because for her to flourish in a career she needed to to you know to to travel and be outside of the country so yeah. now it gave me the liberty to travel with her which ultimately brought me to what i'm doing now as wow. well so all things work together for good wow man so, yeah. so i mean you, you you then go to kenya when, when did you go to kenya uh when was it uh let's see kenya it was 2015 yeah 2015 yeah. 2015, I think, or 2014, yeah. 2014, was it? 
let's say 2015, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so, so how, how did you then end up in the app, in, in the shoe business? Yeah. You know, so, so you, you, I mean, you, you get on your, pack your bags, get on your flight, or our, you land in Nairobi. Yeah. I don't know if you're in Mombasa or Nairobi. Or Nairobi. Nairobi. Yes. I mean, then first day, or maybe you're not really thinking about work, but. Uh, actually, I was, because yeah. I, I knew that there were so many skilled uh, app developers, but then the market there wasn't the market for me because I'm not traditionally a developer. That's yeah. the thing. So you have to leverage of other people's capabilities. Yeah. And that's the thing. Uh, many people, they think that they can do it all themselves. Yeah. Uh, you, need to, you need to understand that people are there for you. Yeah. And you have to leverage that. So, so I knew that I wasn't the greatest. Or, and, and it would be more difficult for me to, to, to sell as much as I could when I was here in South Africa because it would be a matter of people seeing my, my, my website and then I go to them, I, I do a demo, and then uh, it would be easy to convince them with the demos. Yeah. yeah but then now when I was in Kenya, uh, it, the environment was a bit different, so mm. I tried to look at the corporate space and I wanted to form uh, like a a consulting services firm which incorporated financial services mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, that didn't really work out so well because it's important also to identify good people to work with yeah so I mean I'd had I'd been through enough uh, you know trials uh, here <laughs> to to know when things are not going to work, work well. out yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, you know, my wife was also a good inspiration. So it's, it's also important to have people around you who are going, that are going to draw ideas at you. And, you know, my wife said, look, you know, focus on, on the sandals, you know, focus on, on, on this stuff here. And I said, great idea. So mm. now my attention shifted and I focused on... So, so I mean, where, were, where were the sandals? Were there already uh, something in the in works at the time? or? Yes, it's something that we thought about before so I was even that's why I was so excited to go to Kenya the yeah. thing with me like I'm very dynamic you can yeah. take away the shoes from me it's it's just another mo it's just another mode if you say <laughs> Musa build houses I'll, yeah I'll probably succeed in that yeah. if I'm passionate about it because yeah. that's another thing it has to be something passionate because mm. people say no go to somewhere where there's money I don't think there's such a thing uh, I think that's one myth uh, where people get disappointed. People think that, oh, if I go into this, I'll be making money. Mm. But then unless you have a vision for that, yes, in some places you might make money, but some people are so miserable because mm. they, they're chasing money before they, they chase a dream. Mm. They yeah. chase their, their passion, yeah. chasing their purpose. You know, what makes you, you know, get up? In the morning. <laughs> Absolutely. So I was fascinated by the crafts, you know. So yeah. I went there to the markets, you know. And another thing is to get out of your comfort zone. That's another thing with entrepreneurship. If mm. you're an entrepreneur and you're in your comfort zone, you're only going to make it so far. You know, there are places they told us, you know, you cannot go to these places. But then I was like, but that's where the potential is. Mm. So I went there, obviously cautiously, you know. Yeah. Uh, be careful. And... That is where now I discovered this whole new world, you know, I made new friends and I told them, you know, I'm from South Africa and, and we started brokering business deals, you know, and I was learning whilst I was there. And, and, and so things started to happen and, and, you know, people would see the sandals and then like, but do you make shoes or yeah. do you make this? So that's from one product, you know, I was developing more products so like a portfolio of products from mm. sandals to beadwork to belts oh okay i'm not wearing my belt <laughs> oh, okay this one is okay it's not really from there but <laughs> but i had this whole collection you know yeah. that i was making so it it really grew nicely and then i was i was i was really passionate about that and then what i saw there the skills and but then now how people were being compensated Mm. or rewarded for their work it really hurt me and uh, we mentioned african design earlier mm. on uh, so i realized that africa has it has put is making such great products but then the products are not going out there the world is not seeing them and i was convinced that africa doesn't need say the west 
uh, to be good. Mm. Uh, uh, and so that's how African design was born, to say, look, Africa is capable of making these great things. Awesome, man. I yeah. mean, that's, that's, that's so true, man. I mean, I mean, Africa, you know, we are Africa, man. And, uh, and, and we can do, you know, um, as much as anyone else can do. Man, so I mean, man, guys, I mean, if you got any value out of this, man, you know, hit that like button, man. share yeah. this channel right now, man, share yeah. this video, you know, let your friends know, you know, what's out there, you know, <laughs> love this channel, man. Yeah. So I mean, Musa, one thing, man, you can tell someone who's watching right now, 2021 just started, okay. man, what sort of attitude should we take into this thing, you know, to win? Uh, there's no particular one thing, but then... Hmm it really helps to have, have a set of values that you're going to live by. Uh, so part of my values is be authentic for me and believe in what you're doing. Because many people give up too easily. Uh, even uh, with, with the shoes, you know, I get many people who are so excited. They look at the shoes, they're like, wow, these shoes are so great, you know, I can sell these shoes for you. I'm like, okay, great. Uh, and then, they, they get the shoes, and then by the time they start to, to knock on doors, they get rejected, like, wow, the shoes are great, they get rejected. <laughs> so people are looking for get-rich-quick schemes, uh, yeah. if I can put it that way. Mm. Don't look for shortcuts. Uh, look for the, go for the long haul, you know. Believe in what you do, get the right mentorship. And another thing that I've seen, uh, actually, I'm sharing one of, of my secrets now. Uh, that <laughs> Secret uh, time, guys. Yeah. Take notes. <laughs> For, for a long time, uh, I was, I didn't want to spend. Uh, I'm sure many, many, many people would, would identify with this. You know, you don't want to spend, oh no, I'm going to pay so much for this. Mm. But then acquire knowledge, the mm. right kind of knowledge. So spend time to identify, you know, first uh, someone who can mentor you, who, who's been there, who can guide you mm. so that you, you don't make the same mistakes or you avoid most of the mistakes. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do that, but then, you know, I was looking at different people, but then I was fortunate enough to, to be surrounded by, by uh, right people and then also listen to the right people who could lead me to the right uh, uh, material. Yeah, yeah, and then material. Also, and also being in the right place, you know, under, uh, like in church, you know, they were teaching a very, a very, uh, specific message mm. that that really helped to inspire me so i knew that i could connect what I'm, i was doing with with my spirituality yeah uh, wow. so so everything has purpose if you're purpose driven then you're going to succeed i don't know i've said a bit too much but <laughs> no, have a set of values you have a set of values and i think yeah. everything is connected right yeah. so so to, to i mean spirituality is, is an important thing so you can't go out there but thinking that your purpose is not connected to you spiritually. I think you, that's not, a, I think you can't go far. But those who go far is that if I'm convinced that, you know, the, the business I'm doing, the yeah. greater cause, you know, is aligned to, you know, my God. God, yeah. No. I think that's how it is. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we all work for something. Some people work just for, for their own families, uh, so it's just about them, which is good, you know, that's their choice. Yeah. Uh, others, they work to prove other people wrong. It's a good motivation, you know, for you to succeed. So there needs to be some driving force. And, and for me, it's to really uh, advance the kingdom of God, yeah. you know, to be, to be a light to the world, to mm. show that, uh, you know, as you can, you can have goals and you don't need... You don't need money to make it big because so many people are negative. You know, the media is giving negative news mm. all the time. You know, that you no know, unemployment is like this or mm. we are junk status. But I, I, I purposed in my heart. I said, OK, since they are saying that South Africa is junk status, yeah. uh, it's not under my watch. Yeah. I, I'm going to show that even if it's junk status, we are going to produce awesome products and yeah. we are going to we are going to create opportunities for people. And this has been one of the, of the best periods for me. You know, there's so many opportunities. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, it, like in one of, you said I must give one thing. People must, must stop seeing challenges as, as, 
as uh, setbacks, but they must see them as opportunities. Awesome, man. Hey, thank you for that, bro. I mean, man, this was such an awesome session, man. And uh, I know you guys learned a lot. I definitely learned a lot. And uh, man, hopefully we have you back, you know, so that maybe do a podcast we can speak about specific, you know, you know, um, you know, topics in business, you know, that yeah. may, you know, want uh, guys may want to know uh, about. And and you guys have even got some content and things that you want, you know, to see on the channel. You know, let us know, man. Type in the comment section below, yeah. and uh, so that we can get that, you know, to you guys, man. So guys, man, God bless you, man. Love you, man. And definitely we'll see you on the next video. Cheers, man.